Welcome to Voices from the Bench, a dental laboratory podcast. Send us an email at info at voicesfromthebench.com or look for us on Facebook at Voices from the Bench. Greetings and welcome to Voices from the Bench live from the Eastern Conference of Dental Laboratories. My name is Elvis and we are at episode number 85. So I'm wrapping up the last day here at the Eastern Conference of Dental Laboratories meeting in Concord, North Carolina. Unfortunately, Barb had some uh, laboratory business to take care of and she couldn't make it. I really needed her here to pull in some people to get some interviews. Still able to get a few and, and some really good ones. So I'm looking forward to releasing those at a later date. But this meeting is amazing. What great content, what great speakers, what a great vibe. They've really done themselves a nice service here to the technicians in the area. I can't thank enough for the board and for Martha and everybody that invited us out. But I have a special treat for you today. We have some interviews I got back in Louisville at the Whitmix Digital Forum. I was able to convince Denture Dan Elfering to sit down and talk about his story. He talked about his time in the Air Force, working at the in-office lab, his excitement for Crystal Ultra, thank you, Digital Dental, and being a super master CDT. And then I was able to get, after some convincing, the only identical twin lab owners, Anita Cranford and Elise Halask. Both CDTs, and they own a lab called Identical Dental Laboratories. They talk about how they started in the industry, work separate but then got together and brought it all under one roof. Join us again from the Whitmix Digital Forum with Dan, Anita, and Elise. Is zirconia giving your lab a hard time on your full arch cases? Yes, for me. Have you experienced warping or breakage in your centering oven? Yes, for me again. Have you ever had an arch return for adjustment and had to scrap it and start all over? Yes. So, there's a better way. Introducing Crystal Ultra Nano Ceramic by Digital Dental. The better alternative for full arch dentistry. A Crystal Ultra Arch is 60% lighter than a Zirconia Arch, is easily adjusted chair side, and can be milled on a one-to-one basis with no centering required. That saves you, what, 10 to 12 hours right there? Not only is a Crystal Ultra Arch better dentistry for patients, it's better for your lab as well. To learn more about the future of full arch dentistry, visit www.crystalultra.com forward slash voices. Crystal Ultra, feel the difference. Voices from the Bench. The Interview. Why I hate this is I hate the my sound. Oh yeah, I can turn you down. <laughs> Take my picture. That's oh, me. you know we're gonna do it in NPR style if that's okay. Today we're joined by Dean Everett. Appreciate you coming. I don't know about that. <laughs> yeah. You got the new iPhone, huh? Is yeah. that your phone? Yeah. How do you like it? I'm, I just picked it up Sunday, and I'm still getting used to it. Yeah. And I didn't get a very clean download. I downloaded to or backed up on sure. iTunes. Yeah. And when I restored, it started from my iCloud, so I lost all my apps. So now I'm either going to Rebuilding figure, it. Rebuilding yeah. it. I have to add each app that I had and go in. Ugh. I don't know why I didn't get a clean restore so obviously we're not talking about technology today because no. you're having a little trouble with the iphone <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> hopefully this isn't on there but <laughs> weed that out we'll see us. we'll see so we're here at very early in the morning on saturday at whitmix's digital forum what is it like not even eight o'clock 802 that's early we are here with dan elferine elf ring elf ring uh-huh. so elf ring. elf ring how are you sir very good. Nice. Nice. Excited to be here. Awesome. So why, do you, why are you here? You're not speaking. No. I'm, so, I'm a learner. Yeah? So I'm what a, What brought you to the Whitmix Digital uh, Forum? I like Whitmix. Yeah? I like bourbon. 
<laughs> I like their 100 year anniversary. Yeah. Combine it with digital, which we are starting to get into. Okay. And I was in Atlanta last week for sure. the yeah. IDDS. So I took a week's vacation and we just went from there. And my wife and I traveled to get here to, you know, I like supporting Whitmix and yeah. learning. There's some things I need to learn. IDDS was great on the technology, but uh, there's some lectures like Mark Williamson's going to mm-hmm. actually go through a digital design of a denture. Yeah. I need that. So. I like I like this this digital form because it, it seems so more detailed mm-hmm. rather than like a broad. Every, right. every speaker, not only most of them are in a lab doing it every day, right. which is important because you don't need to hear the speaker that knows about it but doesn't do it. But they're in there every day doing it, and it's it's detailed. I yes. like that. Yep. So tell me about yourself. How did you get into this industry? So uh, I joined in the Air Force. Okay. Took a battery of tests, and they said, here's the jobs you're available for. And dental technician, I started reading the job descriptions, you know, fabricates, prosthetic, applied, blah, blah. And it just sounded good. So I chose that. Did you have any idea what it was? No, not at all. Chose that and uh, went in delayed enlistment because I actually enlisted when I was a junior in high school and waited nine months to get in. Because you weren't old enough or? I was uh, too young. I was a junior in high school. My best friend, his dad was an Air Force recruiter and that's how I ended up. We we were supposed to go in together and anyway, I did and he didn't. Really interesting. This is how I ended up there and I just fell in love with it. It's just. How long did you serve for 28 years. Wow. All with dental technology? Well, all dental laboratory. And then when I was at Travis, which was probably one of my favorite assignments because of the things we were doing there. Sure. I was trained as a maxillofacial technician to make eyes and ears and noses oh, really? and stuff. They also had a clinical investigation facility where I was there at the perfect time to get involved in a research pr- implant research project on pigs <laughs> so we had 12 pigs yeah uh four were control group four got hyperbarics four got radiation and four got hyperbarics and radiation and it was to study the effects of uh, those things on implant osseointegration so that was an exciting time and then interesting all of that activity and stuff i won an award uh, senior NCO of the year for the Air Force. So then that got me promoted to the next grade, which was senior master sergeant. And at the time, dental laboratory technicians, that career field kind of topped out at E7. So at E8, they moved me to Alaska to go run a dental clinic. Oh. So I was up there for five and a half years and ran the dental clinic, and then that is where I got promoted to chief master sergeant and had to move, and I, there was really only one Air Force laboratory chief slot, and that was at Peterson Air Force Base in Colorado. Mm. So that's where I came and spent four years and retired there out of Peterson. Wow. So where'd you go after this? So then I retired. Yep. I took a job in mental health as a director of operations and compliance. So you got out of the dental field. I did, because I, the last 10 years of my career, I didn't even really do any lab work. It was all administration, and and so I wasn't doing it. And my neighbor told me about a job in this compliance organization because we dealt with, uh, you know, medical regs and Mm -hmm. stuff. And so I didn't have a job lined up. So I took this job, but it wasn't a good fit at all for me. And so I resigned from that after about nine months. And then I was at home making birdhouses and uh, just biding my time. And and my wife's like, you need to find a job. (laughs) I was down at Peterson at where I retired from and ran into a a guy I knew, Mike Cumbie. And he was telling me about a prosthodontist who has uh, opened up a clinic right by my house. Hmm. It's a half a mile from my house. And he told me about it. Uh, He had actually got a job with them, and 
he said they were looking for a removable guy. Well, in the military, we didn't do a lot of removable, sure. especially dentures. Sure. The just patient population doesn't need dentures. It's younger, yeah. So I said, I, man, I don't know anything about dentures. He said, well, I think he's willing to train. So I went home, told my wife about it. She said, yeah, go down there and talk to him. So I went and talked to him and uh, had a real nice interview. And he told me to come back with a resume. And then the next night he said, come back with your wife. And so him and the doctor and his wife interviewed mm -hmm. my wife, which she was surprised. Why, why, why am I going down here? But it worked out great, and that was Dr. Pickle, and I've been with him the last uh, 13 years. You're still with him? Still with him. I didn't know you worked in a clinical lab. In-house uh, laboratory technician. For oh, I had no yeah. idea. Do you only do that clinic's work? or do Correct. You yep. I don't do any outside work. Really? Fascinating. Yeah. You've moved into <laughs> removables. But that's not what you did in the in the Air Force. Not at all. I mean, it, but that is how I got into this is when I got the job. I mean, I, they had a success unit for injecting dentures. I didn't a success. Eclipse. Well, I don't yeah. know anything about any of these. Dr. Pickle had a friend who worked for Dent Supply because he was doing some teaching with Dent Supply. So they brought up uh, Billy Oye from mm -hmm. Dent Supply. And he spent two days with me showing me how it worked. And so I started going to courses. I'd go to all the best courses I could find, like Rob Cryer, you know, just oh, yeah. all the top people of any denture course, Chicago. And, man, the more I learned, the more I loved it, the more I realized I didn't know. Yep. So I'd go to more courses, and fortunately, you know, I, I could do those things. So that's how I got into it. And the more I learned, the more I d it just became a passion. Nice. I just love this stuff, you know, and it's, mm. Denture Dan just has such a nice ring to it. Yeah, you know? I was going to bring that up. How did that come about? I don't know. It just, you don't know? It just sounds good. Yeah. Did you come and up with it yourself or did somebody I, I, call you Denture Dan? <laughs> I don't. You don't know? Uh, I don't know. It's funny. Can't think back, but it just, uh, I've just been rolling with it and. Yeah. So what processes do you use in your clinical lab now? Are you IvoBasing? Are you... IvoBase. Um, most of what we do is hybrid stuff. Okay. Um, my doctor does all the surgery and then the restorative, and we do it all in-house. So you do the actual conversion and everything. Conversion, right. Um, I see all the patients. I get to work with every patient I deal with. Wow. So it's so fortunate to Very be able... Cool do smile designs on patients and work with them and see it and make adjustments right there or have them back and uh, just love it. I mean, it, for me, it's the perfect. I'm not, you know, a production kind of technician. Sure. I like to sit and do the best work I can. And fortunately, my doctor allows me to do that, Buys, lets me buy whatever materials, the best teeth. And we last year at IDDS is when we bought a printer. Mm. a scanner within the last month we bought a intraoral scanner another printer so we're just starting to get into the digital yeah what are but you printing <clears throat> not much not much <laughs> and the reason is i want the best product i can produce and for printing dentures the resin just isn't mm. i can do a far superior product ivo basing it sure. with parted teeth and yeah, yeah. uh so until the resin gets there or yeah, I bought a, uh, everyone will know the name, a printer that I can't get resin for. So obviously I haven't printed those. But um, we've done some implant temporaries, uh, some splints, some of those yeah. things, but, and some cast work. But we're not doing much now. But with the intraoral scanner, we might do more printing the casts. The models, uh, yeah. The models. Well, you know the difference between a cast and a model, don't you? No. So a cast is a true, accurate representation of the object. A model could be a 3D model. It could be different sizes, you know, like a scaled-down model. Oh, so, so cast model. is 100% accurate. Right. I get you. Yeah. And here I am just telling everyone we pour up models. No. But we don't. Cause we don't. We pour casts. Yes, makes sense. Makes sense. You mentioned earlier that you're checking out Crystal Ultra. Mm-hmm. What's exciting to you about that? What's 
I like it because... Is uh, your doctor excited for it? I think so. Okay. Actually, I told him about it because after listening to the podcast is where I heard about yeah. it. Yeah. Then I started looking into it, and then I ran into a few people who are using it or have heard about it also, and it just sounds exciting because yeah. it's more forgiving than zirconia. Yeah. Zirconia on zirconia is just like two glass balls. Yeah, I'm just not a fan. Do you guys do those? Full arch? Not not many. Yeah. Well, I'm not a fan of them. <clears throat> not I'm at not. all. I like how the ceramic work or the tissue, the tissue seems to always be the problem on zirconia, getting the pink to look good. But yeah. I've seen uh, some models, models, because they're not true. They're just a model, you know, that yep. somebody... So, and they look really nice. The Trilor is, you know, high-performance polymer material. Have you worked with that before? I have some discs of it. Well, yeah. disc uh, arches mm-hmm. from Preet uh, that we're going to use as needed for certain cases. Mm-hmm. But I haven't actually done one yet. We want to start getting into that. Sure. Because we do a lot of hybrid with titanium bar and wrapped acrylic. And, yeah, yeah. you know, those are wearing out. And some patients need maybe a better long-term solution. And now with better materials, it's there. let's go there. Yeah, you know? absolutely. Instead of replacing it four or five years, maybe we can get, you know, th- those things sound like they last 15, 20 years. Well, you're dependent on the acrylic and the denture teeth when it comes to fixed hybrids. This nano ceramic sounds like it's a better deal. It does. I like it so far. Yeah. It'd be interesting to see how it I liked, out. Um, you know, pectin yep. with bonded ceramic crowns, mm-hmm. but we just haven't been able to find the right patient to sure. to meet our needs for that. So That sounds like um, a lot of work, though. <laughs> it the individual does. crowns on each individual yeah, one, that's, yeah. that's, that's, that's hefty. <laughs> <laughs> At some point, it sounded like it would be really fun because you could... Use more skills than yeah. just setting denture teeth and processing. Sure. I mean, I've done this enough to where I'm, I'm ready for a new challenge, maybe. Yeah, no, sure. And absolutely. Maybe the Crystal Ultra. I can't wait to do one. We're fortunate in that the technician who does our fixed work actually has a digital dental mill. Yeah. Because as you learned, yeah. digital dental makes the all the mills in the U.S. Those things are and hefty mills, man. Our guy has them and right here in town and he comes and picks up our cases and so i'm fortunate i can have him do one in fact we send an upper and lower uh, case. oh you're doing a double a double good way to start <laughs> <laughs> well yeah, like he said <laughs> you send them the the cases they get are usually someone's most difficult yeah, cases yep. and if uh, that turns out well they got a customer yep. for life so yep. we're going to test that theory yeah you got to love it when people start with uppers and lowers at the same so you're the only technician there there's two of us oh okay there's two of us what is the uh, how do you guys split the work we work very well together we just comes in and Wes Schlau's the other guy he's air force 2 oh okay he actually Worked. Is your doctor Air Force? Is that what No, it is? not at not all. Not keeping it close uh, in the family or no, not? But Colorado Springs has a lot of military people. So he actually did our fixed work. So there was two techs. Remember I told you yep. <clears throat> Mike Cumbie mm-hmm. was hired to be the fixed tech. Well, he didn't actually start. He did something else. But Wes ended up being a fixed tech, okay. and I did the removable. Well, then his wife wanted him to move to Texas, back to Baytown, Houston area. Mm-hmm. So he went there for, I don't know, it was like six years, sure. five, six years. And they didn't, th- didn't like, like it Texas. as well as they thought they yeah. were and the family issues. And so they were looking to come back. It's too busy for just one tech. So we trained a dental assistant to do a lot of the model work, the mountings, the base, sure. you know, all that. And we trained that assistant to do that work. Well, then he took a job at Clear Choice in mm. Minneapolis. And so Wes had an opportunity to come back. And so now it's the two of us. So we just, you know, it's nothing, nothing rocket science. Yeah. It's if you go see a patient and you, then you own them and oh, I you see. work with it or. <clears throat> so you guys both work with one patient. You guys don't. Kind of. Yeah. M- we try to do that. So uh, as we consistent. start a case, you know, 
it depends on the complexity of if it's something I want, uh, then I'll take it. And uh, <laughs> if uh, if it's a difficult patient, maybe maybe I'll give it to Pass Wes. It and, no, Do you guys ever rock paper scissors for a patient? No, that'd be a good idea. <laughs> we just it just works so well. We yeah. work very well together. So everything. What's important since there's only two of you? Yeah, you got to get along. Yeah. So what's next for you? Uh, well, I'm getting into the digital. Yeah. What's your next big digital? <laughs> So the doc and the two of us went to IDT. Yep. And afterwards we went out to dinner and, you know, we're just talking about what we learned and mm-hmm. what we, how we can use it. How c- can we make the practice better? And well, now he's starting to talk milling. So Yowzer. now milling, I could get into, I could get behind, you know, a milled denture or a milled because it's high quality. Yeah, uh, it starts the printing off the, the resin is in there for long term use for me. Yeah. But milling, you know, just crystal ultras milled, you know. Mm-hmm. Um a lot of these dentures that we see if a milled denture, I let's just say a milled denture I could really get behind. I support. think at this point they are a better denture that's digitally yeah. fabricated. Mm-hmm. I think three D printing's gonna take it over eventually. As the resins improve, yeah. Uh, Dense Supply's high performance yeah. resin looks good. The looks resin looks good. Now this is to me, but I'm not a fan of the IPN tooth. Mm-hmm. I hear uh, that a lot. And how it gets bonded in. I don't like I said, most of our stuff is hybrid stuff. I don't see if you were to use be able to print that and bond on those teeth almost a facing yeah. that it would hold up. Well, how do you get the bar in there um, if you're printing it or even milling it? Well, you, you would probably... Cold cure around it? That doesn't make sense. No. I don't know. Yeah. Ava, Avident's doing something like that. Are they? Yeah. Mm-hmm. We've got to get somebody on here to talk about that because I don't understand how that process works. Yeah, they probably won't tell you. <laughs> it's proprietary. Yeah. <laughs> but you, you could mill... You know, a channel for yeah. the bar and then put the bar in. I don't know. Yeah, interesting. Or do a tissue born. Montreal bar. So Montreal. it sticks out, boom. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. So what mill are you guys looking at? Or uh, The Ivoclar is the one that we were looking at. The P7 or something? or P7. Yeah. yeah. Those things are hefty mills. Yeah. yeah. And we really don't have room for it. <laughs> in our renovation, we actually got rid of some space next door for the pediatric office mm-hmm. they needed more and we had room that we didn't weren't using take it from the lab appropriately so <laughs> but time will tell sure i don't know if we'll go there or not sure and maybe we'll go to a smaller mill i mean roland is here that little mill yep. looks looks good digital dental digital dental those are monsters so are they that big oh yeah i really have not physically seen oh, one yeah yeah they're yeah i know they're hefty and they're they're robust, but I don't know yeah. their size. So. Which is what they're designed to do. They don't vibrate. Yeah, that's so pretty cool. We Maybe we'll just outsource that part. I don't know. Yeah. It's a big step. It's an expensive big step. But there's plenty to learn. This this industry is always changing, always progressing, and rapidly. Oh, you absolutely. Know, in the digital arena. So trying to keep up with it is the biggest challenge. It is. But you seem to go everywhere. I like I, well. I like it. And your and your your doctor encourages this, I hope. A lot of it's my vacation time. Is it? Uh, My wife gets tired of me. Our vacations are between home and, you know, a dental meeting and back and so I mean it's it's worked, but No, I mean I'm the same way. I take a lot of vacation days just to come to these kind of things because I like it. Right? That's where I'm at. It's (laughs) I don't know how crazy we are, but <laughs> I could be sitting on a beach right now, but I'm not. When are you going to retire? I hear that a lot. It's like, I don't know. I don't think about it. Why? I'm too young to sit and make more birdhouses. <laughs> Renovate your house again. <laughs> yeah, we're, we're already on two and three times doing certain rooms. So Yeah, you, you guys know. are gutting that house like there's nobody business. We're, we're slowing down on that yeah. part, I think. Now, then she'll want to move, you know, <laughs> start over. That's not That's funny, hilarious. Elvis. <laughs> <laughs> That's the truth. <laughs> well, Dan, I, I always enjoy seeing you at these meetings. You're 
phenomenal technician. Oh, no. I had no idea that you were locked into one doctor. I thought you were just begging it out for the world. Oh, no, no, no. That's funny. I can only, like I said, I just, I'm, I'm not a production technician. Yeah. I, uh, I'm too slow to work for too many really? people. Really? That's yeah. hilarious. Yeah. That's hilarious. Well, I appreciate you sitting down with me. No, this has great been great. I mean, I've, I've listened to the podcast for, I was a latecomer. I heard about it. But uh, had a hard time finding out how to get to it. And then once I did get on to it, I started listening to it at work, you mm-hmm. know, and really enjoy them. I, I learned that. so much. And it's, like, just fascinating. That's why I was, like, I have nothing to sh- offer. Sure you do. Like some of these people, you know, that are so educational. Everybody's got a story, man. Everybody has great. a story. And it's great. And that's what... I always say about this podcast, it's the most rewarding thing I've ever done, but it's also the easiest because everybody's got something to say. But I hate talking about myself. <laughs> That's one thing you'll know. You can talk about I, somebody else. I, I love talking about other people. <laughs> I like learning about from other people yep. and their stories, but Absolutely. I don't like talking about my story. Well, now you're on it. So. Uh, yeah. <laughs> That's you going to be at Lab Day East? No. No? It's the only one I haven't been to. I've been to West in Chicago. Yeah. But, mm, no, well, we'll too have, many. I mean, it's a lot. This time of the year is very busy. Very busy. I'm a CDT examiner, so oh, I yeah. have two exams coming up, and uh, that keeps me busy part time too. Sure, which is really nice. I enjoy those three or four exams a year. Yeah, that's exciting. I love going into a laboratory like Glidewell, you know, and getting a tour of it and seeing it and just. Row Dental or Derby Dental. Oh, uh, you get to see some great <clears throat> see them labs. All, you know, and you watch people and the materials they use and how they set up their lab. I mean, yeah. it's just you just walk around and you see things and pick up. And I pick up so much from just observing. Oh, sure. Uh, Everyday labs. Yeah. Doesn't matter what it is. You know, it's how they set it up, how they use, um, put their knives on the wall with a magnetic strip yeah. or, you know, just anything. Any, yeah. I mean, I would love to someday, like, take a month off and just tour all the great labs. I'd love yeah. to see them eventually. Yeah. And that's a great thing that you get yeah. to do. If that. you're a one-man lab and you sit there and that's all you see, and even if you go to dental meetings, you're not going to see how people organize their labs. Sure. You don't There's see, so much yeah. value in seeing yeah, no one's like no that. one's in here talking about the little stuff, you know. Yeah. yeah, I've I've had fortunate some friends invited me to spend a weekend with them and going to spend a weekend working with them in their lab. Mm-hmm. I can learn more than in a course for two days, sure. three days because it's interesting. you know we're one one day side by side, just how they do things. And you just pick up those little nuances. Yep. That it was like, oh yeah, that makes sense. Yep, that's awesome. Some great techs out there, and, you know, the removable techs that I've met just seem so open and warm and willing to help. Mm. Where, you know, like when I was in the military and ceramists, you know, ceramists always wanted to protect close hold. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What they're doing, how they're doing it. So true. um, And then I came from kind of that culture to the removable where everybody's just, hey, no, this is what I use, how I do it. It's like, man, it's just so refreshing. And yeah, I've noticed that too. With fixed, it's more of a, in, in larger labs, it's more of a production line. With removables, everybody does everything. Mm-hmm. And I think they enjoy that change of what they do on a daily basis, mm-hmm. so they're willing to share it with other people. Yeah. Interesting. It sure suits my lifestyle. I mean, it's what I like to do. So Yeah. It's Don't been you, a good fit. I hear you have every CDT that there is. Is that true? Uh, yes, I'm certified in all six specialties. What was your first one? Crown and Bridge. And I was in the Air Force and got the Crown and Bridge. And then that's the only one I did the whole time I was in. When I got out yeah. and started working for Dr. Pickle doing dentures, I thought, hey, I should get a denture certification. Yeah, why not? So I called up NBC to find out where the next exam was and they said have you ever thought about being an examiner and I said well actually I have we used to host them at Peterson Mm -hmm. and I thought that looks like a neat thing to do so I applied and became an examiner and then got the denture one and then I was doing the implant so I said I maybe I'll do the implant one and so then I got the implant 
So you even have the ortho? Ortho wow. and I don't – ortho and probably ceramics may have been the hardest because I, I don't do a lot sure. of it. So I practiced every weekend, did a full exam, did every – thing you're supposed to do for four weekends in a row practicing yeah, yeah. practicing and getting better at bending wires and yeah so so you you're a master master cdt cdt but you need five to become a master yep. but i think there's like 10 of us that have all six all six mm-hmm. that's awesome yeah well it's just a personal goal you know it just uh after you start and then you see well geez why not do the next one and why not do this one? Yeah. I was fortunate enough to do some RPD work in Germany at a uh, area dental lab working under um, a lady who is very well known in the military mm-hmm. and got some good training. So the RPD one wasn't too bad because I had done that. But like I said, ortho, I haven't done a lot of ortho. I didn't even know what a lot of those classes sure. and everything were, you know. So it was just practice, practice, practice. Yeah. Anything's possible if you practice. Oh, absolutely. And that's why I'd say to anybody challenging the exam is anyone who wants to practice and do it, it's a certainly achievable. Because I'm not anything special as far as a technician, <laughs> but maybe more determined and yeah. more passionate than That's what it most, takes so. some of the time. Sometimes it's more passion than skill. Yeah. Yeah. In my case, that's true. <laughs> it's all passion. If you could give any advice to anyone wanting to become a CDT, what would it be? Um, you have to study yep. for the comprehensive and the yep. sp- written specialty. And then, again, practice. Figure out what the exam is. No, uh, They tell you exactly what, what you, you need mean. to do. Yeah. Practice it. Go in on a Saturday morning. Sit down. Go through n- timing, and time management is the biggest thing, time sure. management. Know what step you're going to do. Maybe even write it down so that you can look. Mm. See how long it takes you to do each step. See at the end of 5 hours and 15 minutes where you're at and if you, where you need to speed up. Nice. But it's all time management. Nice. Well, they do a mentor program now where you can actually go on the NBC website and find someone willing right. to help you. Denture Dan. Denture Dan. Appreciate it, sir. You Thanks bet. for coming in. Elvis, keep up the good work. I, I love appreciate it. it. We will. All right. Thanks. Just don't try to say my last name because you'll let <laughs> Oh, I'm terrible. What is it? Halasic. Elise Halasic. Elise Halasic. 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 Elise Halasic and Anita Cranford. Yes. Yes. <laughs> Are here at the digital. Forum from Wet Mix. You guys are from Texas, right? Yes, we're from Lubbock, Texas. I was going to say, we saw you at the DLAT meeting. Yes. And you guys, here's a, here's, we're audio, so nobody knows that you guys are twins. Mm-hmm. Yes. And your name of your lab is? Identical, identical Dental, dental lab. lab. Identical de- Where'd you come up with that name? <laughs> <laughs> we are identical twins. <laughs> That's awesome. So tell me the story. How'd this all come about? How do you guys own a lab? Okay, so back um, in 1990, we were 17. Elise started uh, working at a Crown and Bridge Dental Lab in Lubbock. Yeah. Um, hired on to do pickup and delivery. And, that you know, was of your course, first job. Yes. Yeah, and, you know, during your downtime, you start learning other things in the lab and, and all of that. And there was a uh, removable lab that was hiring, also hiring a driver. And so they, uh, um, she got me the job over there. And so I started driving for them. And so we would both kind of go out on our little delivery routes yeah. in the morning. And for then, competing labs? Well, no, they were. So one was Crown and Bridge and one was Removable. Okay. And so, so they, really, they worked yeah. together and advertised as a full service lab and, Interesting, and worked yeah. in kind of the, some of the surrounding towns and, and all of that. And so, uh, so wait a minute, they let 17 year old, 17, well, 18 where, you know, dry, just, yeah. wow. yes. Uh huh. Yes. So I was 18 when, you know, when I yeah. started, she started and she was, it was, you know, it was right um, after we graduated and all that. So we started doing that, working in the lab, just doing little things here and there. Sure. And then uh, I moved to the Fort Worth area and got a job at this awesome dental lab that, um, for working for Nancy Johnson uh, mm-hmm. from Crown Kingdom Dental Lab. Amazing and, person. Yeah, she Crown was just. Crown Kingdom? Crown Kingdom Dental Lab. That. Yeah. And then within about, I think, six weeks, Elise moved to that area too. Came to work at the same dental lab and still we, delivering. No, no, no. we oh. were just doing you know working in the lab. I was uh, I've since 
that was my first time working in the Crown and Bridge Dental Lab. I started doing model work because I'd done models before and, mm-hmm. and then waxing. And she was doing porcelain by that time. Mm-hmm. So she was a ceramist there, and we just learned so much from sure, her. Yeah. She, w- just, she taught us everything. We wish we could go back and learn more. Yeah. Um, she was just a great teacher. You're working there. You're working. So what, at what point do you realize... Well, so after probably about five and a half years or so, I moved to Albuquerque and worked for Dental Lab there. Really great guy, John Nelson. Yeah. And worked there for a while. And during that time, Elise moved to the Oklahoma City area and started working at a dental lab there. And we always thought, hey, if we get back in the same state, that we could uh, open up a lab together. Yeah. And so finally we did. Um, So you came back to Texas? No, we, by that time she was in Oklahoma City. And so we uh, decided that we were going to open up a lab there and we worked for a dental lab in uh, in Norman, Oklahoma, mm-hmm. for a while while we started our own and and we went and told them, hey, we wanted to do this and you know at first they were just you know they weren't so sure about us trying to open up our own lab while, while we still working, worked there, sure. but um, but they right. allowed us to and and all that and it just worked out really great. So when you started your lab, was it just you two working mm-hmm. in it? It was just us two. Yeah. Four. Was it out of the garage type situation? Sort or? of out of our homes. We both have areas at our homes that yeah. we can that we still work. Oh, really? Um, yeah. Uh huh. Uh huh. Yeah. And we rented a little location and all of that. And then uh, she worked at home quite a bit. Took her part home with having having more children. Young, you know, young kids. Oh yeah. Um, <laughs> and stuff. At one point, put the she baby had, down, start the oven. Yes, that kind and of thing. yeah, they're just yeah. right there. And oh, yeah. at one point, she had two employees working with her at her house. Really? I think we finally had to get a bigger space so we could all kind of get back into sure. one one place. Uh-huh. So you found a location point, so. where you mm-hmm. actually the lab was yeah. physically located. Yes. And at that point, you had how many employees? Well, we we had each had two, two working yeah. with us. So I kind of took care of models, waxing, metal finishing, pressing, uh-huh. that kind of stuff. Um, in You know, and I was just kind of, you know, I did all the quality control and that kind of stuff. And then Elise took care of the... So everything, you oh know, my God, with the porcelain. Oh, little dog. <laughs> this is great podcast <laughs> material. That's adorable. <laughs> you know, you we have dog. dogs at our lab. Yay. <laughs> we love dogs. Yes, we, we do. two wine runners come <laughs> every day, and then Elise has um, a shepherd that comes some days. Wow. And so, uh, yeah. Nice. They're, uh, they hang out there and keep everybody happy and all that. So you're in charge of the waxing, mm-hmm. the metal finishing, all that up into ceramics, and that's where you come into play? Mm-hmm. Yes. Interesting. Uh-huh. Yes. So when you started, was it all mostly the analog casting? Oh yes. Pressing. Yes. Are you still doing it that method? Oh yes. We well we do both. We have we um, do a lot of digital as well. Yeah. Um, but we still do um, a lot of things the analog way. We still cast. We do a lot of PFMs. Do you still do a lot mm-hmm. of PFMs? We do gold. Yes. You know, gold isn't always my favorite, but it's just you know one of the dirty jobs that yeah. you do. Do you have a mill? Do you get into yep. that? Yep. We have two mills. Um, we have a we have the Sega printer as well, nice. and so we do what some printing. printing. We print a lot of models. Primarily, yep. that's why we got it was sure. to print models and stuff. So okay, how many employees do you have now? Um, how big are you? I think we have seven. We have seven nice. Full time and, and yeah. And so who's part-time. who's doing sales? Who's doing the promotion? Or oh, anything? we don't really do. Anything no, it's all word like of mouth. That. Yeah, it's all pretty much word of mouth. I'd say these days we're getting more and more anteriors and implant cases. We do some of the all-on-four implant cases. Do you? Mm-hmm. Do you guys do well. conversions? And yep. We do some conversions. Who does the conversions? Um, I do. Do you really? Yes. Do you like it? Yeah, I do like it. It was a yeah. little nerve-wracking in oh, the beginning. Oh, sure. But uh, we work with some really good surgeons, and, and they're patient and, yeah. and all of that. And so, you know, every time we go to stuff, it's picking up little bits of information of how other people do it and trying to use that and, and make it better and easier and all of that yeah. and so it's not so bad anymore yeah but so we do a little bit of removable as well when did you start doing removable mm, probably three or four years ago three or four years ago mm-hmm. which one of you does the removable or do you have somebody else that does I, it I, I do that mostly so you've um, learned removable only in your own lab or do you learn it at another lab you're well, at no well I started at the denture lab you know in the beginning and well, so drove. I learned some yeah but, you know, you kind of, you get in there and you do investing and you do some waxing and, and model work and all of that kind of stuff. And so you kind of learn that. But, uh, you know, I still have so much to learn, I feel like. And sure. we do have someone that comes in and sets teeth sometimes to help us. You know, we are getting more and more removable stuff. Yeah. And so, but we're still primarily crown and bridge and we just do a lot of, a lot of that and implant work. So. Nice. So what's next for you guys? Are you looking to still grow? Do you want to be a bigger lab? Do you like? We definitely like our size. I think that as you, 
as you get bigger, it's harder to keep the control of the quality. Yeah. Um, and we're, mm-hmm. and that's, that's really it is. That's it the is. most important unless thing. Unless you really enjoy HR. Yeah. It comes with it. Well, right, exactly. And I think that we're kind of, like I said, we're really comfortable where we are right now. We're able to, we, we check every step along the way just to make sure that it's done the way that we want it done because our doctors expect consistency. Yeah, absolutely. And that's kind of one of the things that we're known for is consistency and, and all of that. And that's, you know, in quality. And so uh, that's just kind of our goal. Are you guys CDTs? Mm-hmm. Good. Yes. Yes. Good. What are you? Yes. CDTs in Crown and Bridge? Um, I'm in Crown and Bridge. And Elise ceramics? is in ceramics. Nice. Mm-hmm. How long yes. ago did you guys get your CDTs? Well, we were thinking about that. I got mine, it might be close to 18 years ago. Wow. Um, and Elise just got hers. I yeah. just got mine recently. I don't look old enough to be having this <laughs> number. Yeah. We've been in the business for like 29 years, I think. No kidding. Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. For a long yeah, time. Since 1990. Are you, are you guys the only twin owned lab? Do you know that? Well, we haven't ran into I don't no. think we've ran into any more twins. Interesting. So. Something to say. You know. Yeah. We have fun together and we work together. I mean, yeah, we, we have our moments like, you know, anybody. Anybody, and yeah. And so, uh, but, <laughs> um, but we enjoy it. Yeah. So why are you guys here at the Whitmix Digital Forum? Why did you guys come all the way up here from? Well, we always like coming to Whitmix yeah. and all of that. Just always to learn. There's always more to learn and, and all that. Nothing really in particular. Yeah. Um, but uh, we just wanted to learn learn a little more. In it's always important. Yes. And this is, this kind of format's nice. Yes. I like it. It's not it's like a lab day huge. Right. It's, it's comfortable. It's, it's more intimate. Right. I really enjoy the, the digital aspect of it because uh, that's where you got to go. Right. You know, so. Right. Are you guys looking for any more equipment or? Not right now. Um, no? You know, we pretty much have everything we need right sure. now. Sure. It's just a matter of making use of everything. There's so many more options, so many more possibilities that we can with do with what we have. So. Yeah, absolutely. Utilizing what you already have is sometimes forgotten. Yes. Because right. people like to buy new toys. Yes, <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes, exactly. There's yeah, always it's yeah. like, I want that new mill, but I'm only using mine Yeah, it's not running the all the time. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, I think a lot of people fall for that. So right. it's smart to utilize it. Well, thanks so much for coming oh, you're on. Welcome. This is Thank great. You. I appreciate it. I know you guys were nervous. It's yes. awesome. It's super easy. <laughs> yes. Meeting you in Texas was a was a highlight and yeah. hopefully we'll get to see you again. Yeah, we'll be next there. Next year. Yeah. We'll cool. Be hopefully yeah. we will too. Yeah. So okay. Thank you so Sounds much. Great. Appreciate Thank you. it. Not many technologies have created the excitement that Digital Dentures has in just the past year or so. Whitmix has certainly felt the excitement and put together a popular digital denture system that's both easy and accurate. The system consists of a validated process using Denco resins, which is the first FDA cleared printed denture material, and a Sega 3D printer, and the Uvatron UV curing light. These three elements together is fast, easy, and ensures the dentist and the patient of a reliable, predictable fit. The Denco materials, physical properties, and biocompatibilities have passed FDA requirements and are similar to conventional denture bases and acrylic teeth. Add to that the accuracy and speed of 3D printing with an Asiga printer and the convenience of curing with a UV light, and you have a very desirable denture material. The Tryon resin is ivory colored. The tooth material is available in Vita A1, A2, A3, A3.5, B1, and B2 shades. And the denture base material comes in original pink, light pink, reddish pink, and dark pink shades. If you've been thinking of introducing a digital denture product into your laboratory's offerings, Whitmix can help you do that easily, effectively, and with a profit. Watch for one of the company's hands-on digital denture participation courses or learn more about the system at Whitmix.com. Thanks for your support, Whitmix. So we can't thank enough, the three of them, for sitting down with me at the Whitmix Digital Forum. We love hearing all the unique stories that everyone in our industry has. I can't imagine hiring a 17-year-old delivery driver and then having them turn into a lab owner. What a great story, and I can't thank them enough. We also want to give out a big thanks to everyone who got a shirt or a hoodie in our last sale. We raised well over $100 for the Foundation of Dental Laboratory Technology, and every little bit helps, and it all adds up. This is the season for giving, 
So head over to dentallabfoundation.org to learn more and to give back to the greatest industry there is. Now, unfortunately, Barb and I don't have any travels for a while. The next event we have is Visions 21 that's going to be in Las Vegas, January 16th to the 18th. This is a great meeting and the one that will ring in Barb as president of the NADL. We have an upcoming episode featuring some of the speakers that will be there, but it is never too early to register and to make your plans for Vegas in January. Have I mentioned Vegas in January? Head over to this episode's show notes for a link for more information and to register. And if you work at or own a lab and have never attended the Visions 21 meeting, we have a special Voices from the Bench deal for you. Contact the National Association of Dental Laboratories by phone at 1-800-950-1150 or by email at meetings at nadl.org and tell them you heard about the Visions 21 meeting on Voices from the Bench and you'll get a special rate that is almost $200 off the regular attendee price. It's only $400 to attend this exceptional business meeting. And this deal is for newbies only. So don't miss this great event and don't miss the upcoming episode where we talk to a few of the speakers that will be there. As always, we'd like to thank our sponsors, Digital Dental and Whitmix, for all that they've done, and we appreciate their support. All right, everybody, I got a few more interviews to get, and I'm going to wrap it up here at the Eastern Conference of Dental Laboratories. Hopefully, Barb will be back. We'll talk to you next week. Have a good one.